We'll start Genexus by double-clicking the desktop icon. The name and number displayed here indicate which version we're using. Using the latest version is highly recommended. When we start Genexus, we see this interface, which is called Integrated Development Environment, or IDE. It's divided into Windows, Toolbars, and a main menu. The on-screen position of these windows and toolbars is completely customizable. For example, we can change the position of a toolbar, or hide a window, and show it again using this menu option. We can also control docking behavior by clicking on the pin button. This way we can also fix them in one position, or even arrange them differently on screen. This is the start page, which displays notices and headlines. Note that without even leaving this development environment, the analyst can communicate with the Genexus community and browse the web for news, updates, or even solutions to problems posted by other developers. To start developing a new Genexus application, we create a new knowledge base. A knowledge base is a project, so to create a new project in Genexus, we create a KB. Notice that the start page gives the option to create a new knowledge base or open an existing one. We can also create a new knowledge base by selecting File, New, Knowledge Base from the menu bar. We select this option and the following dialog box is displayed. Here we enter a name for the knowledge base that will be created. Since we'll be developing a sample application for a travel agency, the knowledge base will be called Travel Agency. Here we indicate the folder in which the knowledge base will be created. It will be saved in C, in the KB Travel Agency folder. In the Prototyping Environment combo, we have to select one of the programming languages available. The language selected here will be used by Genexus to generate the corresponding application programs, as well as the necessary programs to create and maintain the database. In the trial version, we don't have the option to select environment because it's predefined. We'll select C Sharp Environment. Later on, we'll be prompted to enter the database details. This combo, Target, is used to indicate whether you want the application to be generated for a web or Windows environment, or for a combination of both. We leave the web option selected by default. Lastly, the language combo lets us select the language in which we want the application to be generated. That is to say, the language used by Genexus to generate button labels, messages, and so on. Once again, we'll leave the default option, English. Now before we create the knowledge base, let's take a quick look at the information displayed by Genexus. It shows the folder in which the knowledge base will be created, and the last two lines in particular describe the database that will store the knowledge base data. It's worth pointing out that it isn't our application database. This database will actually store data related to the settings made in our knowledge base. Now let's click the Create button. It informs us that the folder where we have decided to save the knowledge base will be created. We click on Yes. The knowledge base is now being created. Now that this process is finalized, we'll upload this knowledge base to a Genexus server in the cloud. Though not mandatory, we should use GX Server so that history of the project activity is recorded, and especially so when several individuals are working on the same knowledge base. To do this, we go to File and select Send Knowledge Base to GX Server. Here we enter our GX Technical User and we press Send.
Note that some of the IDE's contents have changed. For example, in the Knowledge Base Navigator window, in Folder View, a tree structure has been created. Its root is the name of the Knowledge Base that we've just created. And below it are some nodes that we'll talk about later. 